All right. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Tools and Tips to Achieve Cost Transparency on AKS. I'm KCU, Product Manager at Microsoft Azure Kubernetes Service. And today I'm joined by Jesse Goodyear, Lead Solutions Architect from KubeCost. We'll be chatting a little bit about tools such as a new AKS native cost analysis add-on, as well as third-party solutions like OpenCost and KubeCost, and how they can help you with your cost management journey. So to start the session, let's start by sharing several interesting results from a recent cloud native and Kubernetes FinOps microsurvey. This was just published a few weeks ago in December 2023 and was designed by the CNCF with help from several folks from OpenCost. It was conducted over several months from June through November of 2023 and received over 100 respondents um, the goal of it was to dig into patterns around end user cloud consumption and specifically how end users are managing and gaining control over their Kubernetes costs. So this first uh, key finding was around the impact of adopting Kubernetes on overall cloud costs. Nearly half of the respondents uh, mentioned that there's either slight or significant increase in their costs. And this can be due to several factors, for example, becoming more mature on the Kubernetes platform and leading to more and larger scale deployments, or even other cases like applications simply requiring and demanding more resource. Just under a third of respondents mentioned uh, costs stayed consistent, but even some showed slight and significant decrease in costs. This can be due to the uh, inherent out of box cost benefits of adopting Kubernetes over an on-prem architecture, for example. But the crux of Kubernetes cost management um, is that there are many factors which can lead to overspend. For example, over-provision workloads, resource-hungry workloads, uh, cluster sprawl where resources aren't deleted or deactivated after not being used for a long time. These all contribute to challenges in cost management, um, and also factors like lack of awareness and responsibility from engineering teams, operator teams, lack of communication with finance, this can all contribute as well. And without cost monitoring in place, it makes it really challenging to know where to get started, how to get started with cost optimization. Uh, surprisingly, many folks don't have any monitoring in place, that's 38%. And 40% and 40 of respondents are using uh, estimations or some um, not fully accurate way of estimating their cloud costs. So again, very hard to know where to get started when you don't have monitoring in place. In terms of FinOps journey, monitoring is just a piece of the cost management puzzle. There are many other factors. Um, within the FinOps journey. And many customers and end users are at varying stages of this journey. About a third are in the advanced stages where they can actually optimize and operationalize. They're able to do things like right-sizing workloads, track and report, um, do other chargeback scenarios. But many customers, over a third, 35%, are still in the evaluation and analysis phase where they're looking at tools um, that can help with their analysis, help with budgeting and forecasting. 10% are piloting <coughs> tools and processes, and 10% also hasn't started at a, haven't started at all. So the remainder of um, our slides will kind of go over which tools can help you let, um, help you with your cost optimization and help with the monitoring scenarios. Our first tool that we'll chat about is AKS Cost Analysis. It's an AKS add-on that is pre public previewed that we recently announced at KubeCon NA and Microsoft Ignite back in November 2023. It's a native um, Azure native cost allocation and visibility experience that's directly integrated into the Azure portal. It allows you to get very granular cluster infrastructure cost breakdown by Kubernetes specific constructs, such as cluster namespaces, as well as 
Azure asset categories. So the, the compute network and storage categories. Um, along with it, it's available for standard and premium tiers. Uh, the AKS cluster is at no additional costs. Your data is directly visible within Azure portal. And it's a first of kind add on in many different ways. It's the first native cloud provider cost visibility experience that is built on top of the open cost open source project. And we've worked very closely with open cost team. Um, we have folks within Azure contributing back to the project who are now very exciting. Uh, they're at the committer and maintainer status. So we're excited to continue that collaboration with open cost and keep improving the product experience. And this is also the first service specific cost drill down within the Azure portal. So if you want to learn more information, there's that short link in the top right corner that has all the details. Now for a quick demo, I'll be in the CLI. First, I want to check that this uh, feature is not enabled. It's off by default, so there is a feature flag we'll have to do to enable. As we can see uh, right now, it hasn't been enabled yet, so let's do that. AZ AKS update and setting the dash dash enable cost analysis feature flag will basically light up the add-on. And checking, we see that cost analysis is now enabled. Let's jump over to the portal. We'll go to the subscription with my cluster in it, click cost analysis on the left-hand blade, and then in the view, we can select the Kubernetes cluster. And that'll take us to the cluster overview. And here we see every single cluster within my subscription uh, across resource groups, across different locations, and we'll see their total costs for that look back period. We can change look back period to specific months or dates or whatever period you're interested in. And then if we click on a cluster, so cluster one, will be taken to the namespaces view. And here we see all the application namespaces within my cluster. We see the shared costs such as service SLA fee, uh, idle charges, system charges, and they're all broken down by the compute, networking, and storage categories. If I go back to the cluster overview, there's one other view that we can check out. So we'll hit the three dot toggle for cluster one. And there's a namespaces view we saw, and this is the Kubernetes asset view. So here there's a grouping of all of the resources within my cluster. For example, the VMSS, how much of it was idled, how much of it was actually used versus uh, reserved for system charges, for networking. I have a load balancer and public IP costs. And for storage, you have disks and PV costs, again, separated by idle use and system. And then you can also drop down directly from the cluster and the cluster overview and see all the resources in the cluster, but here it won't be separated by category. With that, I'll hand it over to Jesse to chat a little more about open cost and cube cost and how those solutions can come into play for AKS uh, and help you with your cost management journey beyond our native add on. Awesome. Uh, thanks, Casey. Uh, love the overview. Um, I think at some point, maybe at the end, we'll talk about um, when we think various users might use each tool. I'll touch on a little bit with between open cost and cube cost, but I think that the um, the Azure AKS um, cost integration is just a fantastic tool for anyone that um, is already in the Azure portal and is looking at you know where the costs are breaking down. Um, just, um, we'll, I believe I'm sharing my screen right now, so we'll go like a quick demo of both open cost and kube cost. Um, I will be uh, very transparent in that I think many many users have been confused as when the as to when they are using open cost or kube cost, um, to me, 
I welcome all users. So whichever version you're using, thank you. Um, we'll start by looking at open cost. This is uh, what we are using in Azure to bring in uh, this level of detail. And I'll also uh, mention like, you know, it's got a, a, a nice UI and that uh, you can see uh, a graph here and you can um, show periods of time that are relevant to you. Um, and this, this open cost is also not just like this UI that you can use to get detail about what's running in your clusters and consuming costs, but it can it also give you all this information via its API. So it's not, not only a, a user interface, but it's a spec that um, the cloud providers can use in order to um, quantify the costs within a Kubernetes cluster. And so it's both a spec and a reference implementation here. Uh, about two or three months ago, probably for the KubeCon, um, the, we had an announcement for adding cloud costs within open cost. And so with, it, with this, you can pull in all of the Azure billing to find um, where are the cloud native services costs coming from. Um, obviously, I think that um, the Azure portal is a fantastic tool for this as well. Uh, but again, if you're already in open cost or potentially you want to use this API uh, to pull the data into another tool, uh, gives you like a reference or inform implementation of how that all works together. Um, moving on, so this you can see we have the open cost logo. Everything I just showed was open cost exclusively. If I want to compare what is coop cost compared to what is open cost, um, I would first say if we're trying to reduce our total Kubernetes spend, coop cost gives us recommendations for how to save costs. Um, you can see we've got a tree here on the left with uh, one of the menus is savings. Um, the most popular report within the savings is this container right sizing. I think most um, Kubernetes users or developers are very uh, accustomed to seeing containers that are requesting uh, quite a bit more memory than are ever used. And this will give a dollar and cents on how much waste that behavior causes. And just to give an example, I have seen uh, ex um, sidecars that are implemented for things like Istio that were using a gig of memory per pod within a cluster, which just means it was uh, lots and lots of waste with this one sidecar and that KubeCost um, brought to light and was there that customer was able to save a, a lot of money there. The other big difference, um, you know, besides ha having this access to the savings is probably the performance of the user interface. And so if I'm in FinOps, I want to be able to quickly, you know, see a long history of let's just say um, what's been going on within my entire environment. This is a multi-cluster implementation. I don't have that, um, that much data in this environment, but you can see, uh, you know, I implemented this in uh, mid mid December and uh, added more clusters, and then we got varying usage over time. Uh, I'll go back to a, a date range that looks a little prettier, and uh, also show that you know, the drill down within KubeCost. And so if I click on this um, top level aggregation mechanism, I can change my aggregation to something like cluster. So I can see all the clusters in my environment, and then I can drill down into them by clicking on rows. So this is not a uh, native in open cost. And it's just something that has been added to KubeCost to give uh, more information. You can see these bubbles here are the trend. And so if I'm looking at a seven day period, you know, this particular namespace is down 0.9% in costs compared to the previous seven day period. Uh, one cool feature that I will uh, highlight that's been added in the current version of KubeCost that uh, was released earlier uh, this month is the ability to auto-populate many of our text fields. And so previously, if I wanted to filter down to my Azure cluster, I had to know the name of it. And the name might be very unique. And if I'm in FinOps, I probably don't know it. 
But if I have any idea of a part of the name, I can start typing it in this box and it will automatically filter down to that list. And then I can click it and it will filter down to that particular cluster. And I can do this across all my, um, my filtering. And so I can say, oh, I, I'm actually concerned about my, my development namespace, for example. And again, just filter right down to it, click it. Um, I don't want to go too deep into um, futures, but I will say that um, one of the biggest um, things that's coming in KubeCost is our ability to scale to um, environments that have millions of pods running every week and be able to display that data very quickly. Uh, that's already available um, today by um, configuring a few flags uh, during installation. Um, but it will be the default installation in a R2.0 release, which should be within the next 30 days. Uh, make, obviously, the, we're a software company, so when that's ready, we will release it, and not, and not sooner than that. Um, and that's the high-level demo. Um, I, I guess we want to bring Casey back in. Uh, we can kind of wrap up, potentially discuss, um, you know, where do you see these tools being used and uh, you know what personas potentially are best fit for each. You are mute. Thanks, sorry about that. Mm -hmm. uh, absolutely. So in terms of the native add-on, I think it's really great if um, you want to compare your Kubernetes costs with other Azure resources, for example. So if you have, you know, out of cluster costs that are still important when you're reconciling a bill as a finance practitioner, that's a great way to have that all in a single pane of glass. Uh, but obviously for, you know, multi-cluster, multi-cloud scenarios, if you want a single tool to look across clouds, then that's where going beyond the native solution to a third party solution like cheap costs or open costs can really help um, in those scenarios. I think that's a great point. We'd love your yeah. thoughts too. I didn't mean to speak over you, there was a little Wi-Fi glitch, but um, yeah, no, a really good point. Um, you know, if you're a multi-cloud provider, um, KubeCost even supports on-prem clusters and so, you know, we don't have the same integration with Azure in terms of being able to pull in the, uh, the actual costs, but uh, KubeCast does have the ability to define custom costs. So if you've got Dell servers on site and you've got Azure clusters running in Azure, you can have them all within one umbrella under KubeCost and, and be able to, you know, truly understand the cost of all of the Kubernetes resources within your environments. But yeah, um, is I'd like to just say thank you for um, you know actually helping me with the Azure integration. Um, it's been um, a great journey with you guys, and it's a, a great partnership. So thank you. Yeah, likewise. Happy to continue the partnership, and really excited to see what we can both achieve together. And uh, one more slide, want to share where to learn more. Just a few links that might be. Um, that can might, you might find helpful. We have a few links from the CNCF uh, to learn more about what it actually is. If you're not familiar, we have the link to the FinOps micro survey as well that we chatted about. Um, AKS, Kubernetes, uh, KubeCost, OpenCost links as well. And then lastly, the YouTube channel links. So one for the AKS community channel and one for KubeCost channel. But yeah, it's been a lot of fun filming this and excited to hear from our customers. If you all do end up trying any of the solutions out, we'd love to be back. Awesome, thanks, Casey. Thanks, Jesse. Bye. Take care.